Oh. oh, with the Diablo 2 Resurrected Season 2 ladder right around the corner, I decided to drop a little tips and tricks. So right here, I'm giving you the best and most overlooked Harada Cube recipes for Diablo 2 Resurrected. Great to use right at the beginning of a ladder reset. So casters are used way more often than the melee characters. And it's for the casters that this first one up here is going to be for. And that is a caster belt. Now all it takes is a light shark skin or vampire fang belt in Ithrune, any jewel and a perfect amethyst. Now incredibly early on in normal, you're probably not going to be able to get that perfect amethyst. But as you play through the game, maybe in nightmare, you can cube together flawed and normal. Maybe you get lucky at your health forge and get one. And if you are a caster, you're going to want to make this pretty much as soon as possible. This is going to be so much more powerful than anything you have found up until this point. Getting to those breakpoints are so incredibly important early on for casters, because if you cast spells faster, then you're dealing out more damage per second, killing monsters even faster. On top of that, you can definitely roll other good mods on this, similar to how rare stuff rolls. So if you are a caster in Diablo 2 Resurrected, which is a lot of different characters, you're gonna wanna go ahead and make this caster belt. The next one is kind of simple and basic, but I feel like it doesn't really get talked about because it just kind of gets overlooked because like I said, it just is, almost seems too obvious to talk about sometimes. But that is, a lot of people don't even realize you can take three rings, put them in the Harada Cube together, cube them, and you actually will get an amulet. Now, it's not exactly the most crazy GG thing gonna happen here, but it gives you another chance, another roll of the dice to see if you can get something good. Now, if you just get three random garbage rings and cube them together, at least you got an opportunity. It does work the other way as well. So if you find a few amulets along the way or you cube those rings, you get an amulet that's still also not good. You can cube three amulets together and then get a ring as well. I feel like also in Diablo 2 Resurrected, now that there's auto gold pickup, it's not necessarily as important to sell all of these amulets and rings in order to get the gold because you end up just getting a lot more of it than you used to in old Diablo 2. So I think that this cube recipe is even more valid and better now in season two of Diablo 2 Resurrected than it was in old Diablo 2. Next up is a Ral, Am, Perfect Amethyst, and a white type of weapon. You throw that in the cube and do you know what this one does? it actually adds a random amount of sockets to a weapon. Now you don't necessarily want to get the one or the two. Usually I use this a ton right after I finish the game. I'm trying to get that pole arm base with four sockets to, to get myself an insight. So I'll find an elite base, throw it in the cube with this recipe, and I'm hoping, hoping, hoping to get that four sockets to really boost up the damage a ton on the Act 2 Mercenary. Now important to note, you can't use this on superior weapons or anything like that. It has to be just the normal regular white one but you can use it on ethereal bases. So ethereal cryptic axe, ethereal threshers and stuff like that. You can go ahead and throw it in the cube and try to get a random number of sockets. This actually is a better idea than going over to Larzik because weapons like the thresher can actually get a max of five open sockets and Larzik will give you the max every single time. Now, while you only have a one in six chance of getting four open sockets, if you do, you're gonna be a happy person. So when you're going into battle, it's always great to have rejuve potions and full rejuves because then when your health gets down low, you don't have to wait for it slowly, slowly to tick up after drinking a health potion. You can slam one of those rejuves and your health will jump right back up, quite oftentimes saving your life. Did you know you can almost sort of just go over and buy these straight from Akara? That's because this next cube recipe, all you have to do is have three health potions and three mana potions throw them in the cube with a chipped gem, and boom, you get yourself a partial rejuve potion. So you can really just save chipped gems anytime that you find them, even if you don't need them, and you can essentially make yourself rejuve potions. Now, on top of being able to make the partial rejuves a little bit later in the game, once you start finding normal quality gems, you can actually make yourself full rejuve potions just from buying potions from Kara the exact same way, any three mana potions, any three health potions, throw that normal quality gem in the cube, and boom, pops out one giant full rejuve. Now, if you're anything like me, you go around just like YOLOing, going right into mobs, you're gonna need these potions to save your life quite frequently. This way, you just spend some gold over there, throw some gems in the cube that you never would have needed, and you got your life-saving potion. Before you go, slay that like button for me, and make sure you double check and see if you're subscribed up. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's a huge goal. I don't know if we're gonna be able to make it, but you can help me out. Peace out, fellas, and don't forget, keep slaying. Ooh.